Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Dani, and today Great.com talks with Lord Leomir Pomperada, the president of the World Youth Alliance. If you haven't heard of them yet, they work to promote the dignity of the person by building a global coalition of young people. And remember, if you're new here to this podcast, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. Hi, Lord. Welcome. Hello, Danny. Thanks for having me. So excited to chat with you today. Yeah, me too. And I'm super excited to learn more about you guys. And just to begin, tell us a bit about the history of the Alliance. I was really curious about how it all began. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we have a quite an interesting history. So we were founded about, um, I think, 23, 24 years ago in the spring of 1999 in New York City. Our founder is uh, Anna Halpin. She was about um, 21 years old during that time. And she was attending a conference at the UN on population development. And there was a group of young people um, who was uh, world youth. And they um, were asked to speak on the floor, you know, to represent all of us. And they failed to speak on the real needs of young people around the world. Um, Anna began to realize that there was a lack of representation of, you know, like the real needs of young people around the world. And so the next day, you know, she said, like, I just have to go back and I have to talk to these diplomats at the UN. And she distributed flyers and talked to them. And it just caused pandemonium. She was welcomed with the delegates um, because in the flyer she was um, explaining to them that the real needs of young people should not be forgotten, you know, needs to education, water, um, access to, you know, um, education, um, employment. And these were things that were not mentioned, you know, by the young people who were there um, yesterday at the UN meeting. And listening to her, um, a young person herself, the delegates just welcomed her and said, like, um, we agree um, with you that these are the needs of young people and we need to focus on them, prioritize them, um, especially in meetings like this. And so they requested her to have a permanent presence at the United Nations. Um, she was 21 years old. She was just visiting the UN. And the following day, she was asked to found this organization. And so we started with, uh, you know, very little money. You know, our first office was like in the basement. <laughs> and today, you know, we, we live here in the Upper East Side in New York. And we've grown to about a million members around the world in almost every country worldwide. And so um, everything was started, you know, by a response, you know, to a lack of representation of young people and lack of recognition of the dignity that each person has. And so every time I hear the stories, I have goosebumps because imagine like a 21 year old had that courage, you know, to say like, you forgot some things, excuse me, like, you know, these are the real needs of young people, um, not what you presented. And so, um, yeah, that was how the World Youth Alliance started. Wow, that that's an incredible story. And I, I just need to do a brief comment here because I think that nowadays people are somewhat more used to young people talking about issues and raising their voices. You know, it's it, it sort of became a more common thing, thank God. <laughs> But mm -hmm. many years ago, this wasn't so common thing. Especially, especially in, in such respected places, right? It's mm -hmm. it was really rare from young for young people to be invited mm -hmm. to speak to those places. So mm -hmm. it's really a, a, a test of, of courage from her. It's really amazing. Yeah. And how did your story begin? Your history began there. Yes. So um, so my story began um, in college. So I studied in Manila. I grew up in the Philippines, and my background is diplomacy. Um, international relations and my my dream was to work both on policy something like related to the UN or international law and also to work on the grassroots level because one of my personal advocacies was working with deaf young people in the Philippines and when I learned about the World Youth Alliance you know they promote human dignity but they also work at the United Nations And uh, I think the important thing that the World Youth Alliance does is that they know that everything doesn't end at the United Nations. You know, we have all these meetings, all these conferences, all these speeches, but making a difference in the world doesn't end there. You know, we have to go to the communities, we have to implement actual projects and programs on the grassroots level. And so when I met Waya about 10 years ago, 
I just fell in love with it. You know, the people I was working with and they were just um, very passionate. And I discovered that, wow, like young people around the world from different religion, different cultures, different faiths are working together, you know, to really make this vision of promoting the dignity of the person possible. And they give up, you know, a lot of their lives. Some of them, they, they volunteer for many of them, they volunteer, you know, some of them volunteer even while working. And that was really inspiring to me, you know, to see young people giving their weekends, their evenings to this work that we do. And so after college, I did an internship with them in Manila for about four months. And then I um, represented Asia Pacific and in an international conference in New York that they organized. And then after two years, I started working full time with them as director for Asia Pacific. And then after that, after two years, I was elected as the fifth global president of the organization. Wow, that's that's an incredible story. I, I love when people really feel like a calling and get involved and actually find their place, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I just felt like I was in the right place. <laughs> that's awesome. And as you were speaking, even in, in, in the first question, you mentioned some things that kind of gives me a, a better direction of the issues that you're solving. But I think it would be really nice if we could fully understand what you mean when you say... Uh, the promotion of human dignity. What does that mm -hmm. entail? What do, you, mm -hmm. what do you tackle when you think about that? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, I love that question. I get to ask, I had to ask that every time. So in the World Youth Alliance, um, we believe that human dignity begins from conception. We believe that every human person, regardless of their background, their faith, we're all equal in dignity. You know, Whether you're a rich person, you're an old person, you're a young person. And the way in how we approach policy is really looking at the person as the solution. Because oftentimes in our society, it's pretty sad to see policies where they're saying like, oh, the only way for us to grow and develop as a country is to reduce people. If we have only 10 people in our country, we would be super powerful, magnificent. But they're trying to disregard you know, the creativity of people, you know, the power of people to actually contribute, you know, towards nation building. And oftentimes, you know, they create policies that do not recognize the dignity of the person. And all, everything that we do is grounded in that fact. You know, we see, okay, every young person has a dignity, has worth. What does it mean? That means that everybody needs to be treated with love and respect, you know, regardless of who they are, where they're from. And when we have policies that respect the dignity of the person, we can create societies that are flourishing, you know, meaning we welcome, you know, people to be involved and to be part of the process, you know, um, and everybody has a part of it. And the second thing that I want to mention is, you know, we really want to, um, we really believe in the integral development of the person. What this means is really developing like all aspects of the person, you know, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and that um, really contributes a lot to the society. And it's the best investment that every country has, you know, to really focus on developing their people. Because when we have people, you know, who are educated, who have all the basic needs that they have, we can have better countries and a better world. Absolutely. I, I couldn't have thought of it better myself. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really a, a, a broad comprehension. And I think it's vital for the times that we're living on, right? We are, I think mm -hmm. many, many countries are being challenged on, on their history. I think we are all facing like turbulent times right now. And, and it, I, I feel that this perspective what, of what human dignity really can mean gets, mm -hmm. uh, gets forgotten in some ways. And what, where are the regions that you're acting right now? You mentioned mm -hmm. that you are, you were, you are from Malaysia, but, uh, I'm from the Philippines, yeah. Yeah, for, from but, the Philippines. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. No worries. That I'm uh, I'm calling from New York, and this is where our uh, global headquarters is, and this is also where North America office is because it's where the United Nations is located, where we have an active presence, and we do have uh, five other regional offices around the world. Um, so for Latin America, it's in Colombia. For Europe, it's in Brussels. For Africa, it's in Kenya. Um, for Middle East and Tunisia, and for um, Asia Pacific, it's in uh, uh, the Philippines. These are like the regional offices. But outside of those, we have many 
chapters in many countries around the world. Um, and we have members in almost every country. And so when young people join the World Youth Alliance, which is actually for free, you know, when they become a member of WAYA, they work with their regional office to be part of various opportunities for them. Wow. And how do you make all this work? And, and how do you actually tackle this human dignity issue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the one of the things that we really um, focus on in our mission is through educating young people. And we actually start from from kindergarten. So we have a, we have two major educational programs. One of them is a uh, curriculum. It's called the Human Dignity Curriculum. So it's from kindergarten to high school, um, where they learn about um, human dignity, about freedom, about friendship. Um, and one of the lessons there is actually like you know becoming a hero, you know. And oftentimes when we think of you know becoming a hero, we would think like, oh, you need to be su have superpowers, right? And so in some of our classes, you know, when we tell kids like, you can become a hero. You know, a hero is someone who pursues the good, you know, helps others, respect others. When they, we start the class, they would say like, oh, my superhero is, you know, like Superman, Batman. Um, but at the end of the course, you know, you know what the students tell us? They tell us, you know, my superhero now is my mom. You know, because my mom wakes up early to prepare breakfast for me, you know, or my hero is my teacher, you know, because she loves me and teaches me so much. Or sometimes, you know, my hero is my best friend, you know, because he's always there to help me, especially when I have problems. So this is the type of culture, you know, that we're building in schools around the world through our curriculum. And the second one is our certified training program. This one is more for like senior high school and um, young adults, you know, where they study concepts of human dignity to also kind of like study what is solidarity, what is culture, and how does that all reflect international law and human rights. So I would say our really investment is really through education and really the work that we do sometimes, you know, like you don't see the impact in like um, a few days or like maybe sometimes even after a year, but it's more like long term, you know, we're like mm -hmm. here for the long game, you know, and our hope is to build this culture um, around the world that truly respects, you know, the dignity of the person. And that begins when they're young, from kindergarten. Well, absolutely. I think this match can only be won in the long run, right? It's it's mm -hmm. a really uh, long-term project and long-term changes to, to society. Mm -hmm. And you also have, like, a lot of work on advocacy as well, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned mm -hmm. about the UN before. You keep working on the UN, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. with them. How, how does that work? Yes, yeah, so the World Youth Alliance has accreditation to the United Nations, to the European Union, to the Organization of American States, and we work on various issues um, with our you know partner countries to kind of like help them. You know, um, number one, you know when we see that there are policies, you know that um, does not recognize, you know like the dignity of the person or the dignity of the person's attack. You know, we work with these countries, or sometimes when we when countries themselves ask us, you know, to be part of the discussion and the dialogue, then we, we, we join them. One of the challenges that I see um, in our world right now, even in some of these platforms, is just the lack of dialogue, you know. And sometimes um, um, we, we are really grateful, you know, to be part of these conversations. So at times, you know, they say that um, it's kind of sad to see that many governments or international institutions, you know, still don't welcome, you know, young people um in the table and you know like young people are very proactive they want to be part of these conversations and at the world youth alliance what we do is we do research um so we have white papers on various is issues such as hiv and aids maternal health sustainable development um and in all of these issues you know we try to study like what are some of the good policies you know that have been implemented around the world that other countries can learn from and this is kind of like the base that we use when we work with countries around the world. Um, we say like, oh, you know, like these are some of the research that we've done, you know, made by young people. And we think like this can contribute, you know, in creating like legislation in the international or even in the local level. Yeah, this is vital work as well. I feel like it doesn't matter if the, the civil society changes, if you don't have laws mm -hmm. that follow them, we cannot really assure those rights. Right. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one thing that I kept wondering here is how COVID has affected 
your your work, especially on, on the education field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so during COVID, um, we had, like many organizations, you know, we had to do everything online. And uh, it was very challenging at the beginning. But because we work with young people, young people always make a way, you know, to like still participate in our programs. And I'm happy to share with you that actually during the year of COVID 2020, it was one of our most successful years in the organization. You know, our enrollment for our training programs were like 300%, you know, we surpassed, you know, like our enrollment targets. And we even had more and more young people, you know, who were joining our programs. Um, and this really shows us, Danny, that, you know, young people are really want to connect with other young people and they want to learn about all of these important issues with fellow young people. You know, they want to be part of the conversation. And, you know, that was very evident. You know, we've had members and young people who come to our events and they say, like, I haven't talked to someone in like one month, in two months. And I really appreciate, you know, being here. Or they would say, like, I, I feel like even if I'm just alone in my room, you know, I have friends from around the world, you know, in an online setting. And we all have the same problems. And so we have to work together, you know. So really building, you know, those friendships was really, like, important. And at the end of the day, really letting young people know that, you know, they are not alone. You know, that they have problems. They're in the middle of the pandemic, but they're not the only one. You know, there are other young people out there, you know, who are experiencing the same challenges. And, you know, they together, you know, they can kind of like help each other, you know, in that in that process. And and talking about that, you said that the process to getting uh, involved is free, right? Yes. <laughs> and yes. what are the steps to really be part of, of the Alliance? So to become a member of the World Youth Alliance is very easy. You just have to go through our website. That's wya.net slash charter and they can sign up you know to become a member of the world youth alliance our requirement is they just have to be between the ages of 10 to 30 years old so again it's 10 to 30 years old and it's for free and if they're over 30 they can still sign the charter and instead of a member they become a world youth alliance friend you know we welcome them also in the organization and basically when they sign um sign up you know they they say that they agree to the three main principles that we have in the organization. The first one is we believe that every person has intrinsic dignity from the moment of conception to natural death. This means that your dignity does not come from the government. You know, nobody can take away your dignity, you know, whatever happens to you. You know, you always have the same worth. Number two is we believe in the importance of protecting the family. You know, the family is where we first learn about our dignity and it's the building block, you know, of a society. So, you know, we need to really nourish the family and protect it. And the third is we believe on integral human development. As I said, this really entails developing the whole person, all aspects of the person and looking at the person as a solution. And if you agree, you know, with these three principles, young people from around the world, you know, they join the World Youth Alliance. And what's incredible is sometimes, you know, when young people come to the World Youth Alliance, they say like, wow, like I never thought I would meet young people who share the same values that I have, you know, because oftentimes in our society today, you feel like, oh, respect for human dignity, like love. Oh, they're not. We don't need them anymore. These are pretty like basic cliche. But then that's the thing, you know, these are pretty basic, but the society forgets about them. You know, these are fundamental lessons that are fundamental in a way and important because without them, you know, we won't be able to move forward as a society, you know, so ideas like respect, you know, and true friendship, you know, these are things that could change our world. And that's really, you know, the mission of the World Youth Alliance, bringing these young people to help them make a difference and for them to realize that, you know, they're never too young to lead. Wow, I, I love this last sentence, last sentence, you're never too young to lead. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And I'm also happy to hear that I, even though I'm over 30, I still be <laughs> a Yes, friend. you're so welcome as a World Youth Alliance friend. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I'm glad our... you mentioned that actually, yeah, because uh, actually I wrote a book um, in the middle of the pandemic and it's actually called You're Never Too Young to Lead. And um, we're going to launch it soon worldwide. And our hope, you know, through this book, I share, you know, like my stories, questions young people commonly ask me, you know, like, how do I find purpose? You know, like, how can I find, you know, like, how can I develop through friendships? You know, and so through this book, um, 
you know, I try to share some of my experiences, you know, working with young people from around the world um, and hope, you know, to really inspire young people. And so hopefully when that gets out, we'll definitely share the word with you. Wow, awesome. Please do let us know when it's out there. We would love to tell people about it as well. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, and well, just to all the listeners, just so everyone knows that the, we'll have the link to their website on the article that we publish or on the description of this episode, so don't worry. But do go there. They have way more information in there that we can cover in this interview. <laughs> and you can easily get in touch with them. And my final question for you today, Lord, is how can people, people help you keep going? I think this is mm -hmm. so important. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Daniel. Well, there are de definitely like two ways. The first one, you know, if you're a young person, if you're not, or if you're over 30, just, you know, joining our movement, you know, as a WIA member or as a WIA friend, you know, we need more young people, you know, to be part of this. Today, more than ever, we face greater challenges and we need more help. And the best way to really do that is, you know, to, to grow, you know, our members and our presence worldwide. And the second is, of course, you know, by, by donating, you know, to, to the World Youth Alliance, helping us through your financial work. And as I said earlier, you know, your investment here is for the long term, you know, for the long run, really building a society where you are helping young people to learn more about their worth and you know we can imagine you know hopefully 10 years from now 20 years from now you know we'll have less corrupt officials we'll have businessmen who really like you know practice like um you know really good leadership you know rooted in a clear understanding of human dignity and that is our hope and we think it's possible and oftentimes it's easy to you know just lose hope but in the world youth alliance we always believe that you know there's always hope and there's always hope for us and yeah, we, we hope you will, will join us and we hope you also support our work through your financial donation. Please, people, do help out and do get involved. I think the more hands we have on this, the faster, the faster this will grow, grow right? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you sure. so much for joining us, Lord. I love this talk. It was Likewise, wonderful. thank you, Dan. I can't believe it's been 20 minutes already. <laughs> right? <laughs> it flies, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> flies really fast yes thank you so much for having me our pleasure and for everybody listening also thank you and remember if you enjoyed this episode press subscribe on youtube or in your podcast app because you know that shows the algorithm that this is an important conversation and then more people can learn about the importance of the world youth alliance bye and see you at the next episode